All right, just wanted to do a video response to Brian Dunlinger's arrogant pride regarding Christmas, and you see why am I doing this video response? Well, first of all, I need to clarify something. I did say that Brian is lost in one of my other videos. I do retract that. I was, uh, I did that video out of bitterness and anger, and that was wrong of me to do so. So I'll admit to my fault. Uh, I'm not perfect. I still have my faults. I still make mistakes. I still commit sin. Uh, I'm not perfect. But the bottom line is, is that Brian Dillinger may very well be a saved man, but he's very, very prideful and arrogant when it comes to the issue of Christmas. And I'm not trying to insert myself into any kind of controversy or strife. I'm just simply pointing out how this clip I'm going to show you of Brian Dillinger just shows how prideful and arrogant he is and how he will not take any correction. And despite the fact that numerous brethren who are close to him have tried to correct him, have tried to come to him and rebuke him and correct him over this Christmas thing, he just will not admit to being wrong. And anybody that tries to correct him is just attacked and called lost and all this other stuff by his uh, cult followers. And it is a cult, by the way. By every by the definition of every cult expert out there, Brian Dunlinger is running a cult. You look at the bite model of authoritarian cults, Brian Dunlinger qualifies as a cult leader. He is behaving like a pope, the very thing he claims to be against. And by the way, his defense of Christmas is ironic because I'll show you this in this video. Christmas is a Catholic holiday. It's, it's promoted and defended by Catholics. So I, I've shown that in other, other videos, which I won't rehash that point, but I'm just going to briefly show in this video, not as in-depth as my other videos, but just briefly show also that Christmas is in fact a Roman Catholic papist holiday. And if Brian's going to be so against the Catholics, why is he defending one of their holidays, which they borrowed from pre-Catholic Greco-Roman pagan religions? So just going to play this clip from Brian Dillinger, where he says that he just basically doesn't care what anyone says about the whole Christmas issue, showing his arrogant pride and refusal to take any kind of correction on anything even from brethren that are close to him okay watch this there's some major problems there um major um anybody can disagree with me on the christmas thing and they say it, not into it whatever but it's a liberty issue and i don't care what anybody says it's a liberty issue and that's the way it is see he already said that let me just rewind that because, he, because he's saying it's a liberty issue. You, don't, you do not have liberty to observe heathen customs and, and just slap Jesus Christ on it. Uh, don't mess with him. There's some major problems there. Um, major. Um, anybody can disagree with me on the Christmas thing. And they say it, not into it, whatever. But it's a liberty issue. And I don't care what anybody says. It's a liberty issue. And that's the way it is. See, he says he doesn't care what anyone says. Why? Because he doesn't like having his idol kicked. doesn't like having his uh, traditions of men kicked. So he just, I don't care what anyone thinks because it's a pride issue. He's, he's uh, puffed up and high-minded and just won't take any kind of correction, even from brethren who are older than him or the same age, because he likes to go on younger go off on younger brethren. I mean, me, I'm, I'm 20 years old. I turned 20 about a few weeks ago. And, you know, he'll, he'll go off on someone like me who's 20 and say that, oh, I shouldn't be talking down to somebody who's older than him. But then you have other examples where Philip Newton, who, again, I'm not trying to insert myself in any kind of controversy, but you got Philip Newton, who's the same age same age, age as Brian Dillinger, both in their mid-40s. Uh, he tries to correct Brian, and he won't take correction. Then you have other examples where Brian himself is talking down to brethren who are decades, who are almost two decades older than him. You know, So Brian is a hip hypocrite in that area for saying, don't talk down to me, I'm older than you. Meanwhile, he talks down to other brethren who are older than him or the same age as him, and won't take correction from them. But he says that he won't, he basically won't, doesn't care what anyone thinks about Christmas. It's a liberty issue, which, okay, he's just showing his arrogant pride. But here's an interesting thing. You just go on Wikipedia and just look up the page on Christmas. You'll see something very interesting. It says here. So it says, however, in the 17th century England, some group, some groups such as the Puritans strongly condemned the celebration of Christmas, considering it a Catholic invention in the trappings of popery or the rags of the beast. In contrast, the established Anglican church passed or pressed for a more elaborate observances, feasts, and, and prenatal sessions, again, not reading, good reading things on a computer, and saints' days. The calendar reform was a major point of tension between the Anglican party and the Puritan party. Look at this. The Catholic Church responded, promoting the festival in a more religiously oriented form. So they're promoting this festival in the wake of this clash between the Anglicans and Puritans over Christmas. So they're, the Catholic Church is the one that's promoting it. It says, following the Protestant Reformation, many of the new denominations, including the Anglican Church and Lutheran Church, continue to celebrate Christmas. Why? Because it's just Roman Catholic light, which is what Brian Dunlinger himself has said. That's just, just Roman Catholic repackaged. So, as we saw there, the Catholic Church was defending Christmas. So, if we're going to be so against the Roman Catholic Church, which rightfully so, they're a very satanic uh, cult. They're, they're, a, they're a mystery of Babylonian religion. That's all they are. 
But if we're going to be against them to the full, to all the way, we should be against Christmas too, just on a logical basis. And it's funny how Brian Dunlinger, who's, you know, done a lot of good stuff exposing the Jesuits for the Satanists they are, uh, he's promoting one of the holidays. And again, on the thing of liberty, oh, it's liberty, it's liberty. Again, you, you read Romans 14, 5 in context. It's simply talking about esteeming a day unto the Lord. But I'm going to show you this. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2 to 4, which, you know, Brian has covered in other videos, but I'm just going to quote this just to elaborate on my point. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain, for one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold, they fasten it with nails and with hammers, that it move not. Okay, now yes, this is Old Testament written to Israel, but what's the point here? Learn not the way of the heathen, don't do stuff that the heathen do. If you know it's heathen, if you know it's, and you can say this is instruction in righteousness, you could you can make it out like that. If you know things are heathen, like like, like Paul talks about in First Corinthians uh, six, either First or Second Corinthians six, don't have this in my notes, but he says, don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. You know, don't learn the way of the heathen. You can tie it in together there. And when you're doing Christmas, you're learning Roman Catholic heathenism. That's all that it is. So yeah, you're not supposed to learn. You, you can't. You don't, you don't just get to take heathen customs, slap Jesus Christ on it, and say, oh, it's liberty. By this same logic, we can observe Halloween too, because we can just slap Jesus Christ on it and say, oh, it's liberty, it's liberty. Because that's where it goes down to, oh, people say, I don't do Halloween. Yeah, but if you're going to use this logic of, oh, we're, we're just going to slap Jesus Christ on it and now it's liberty, which is what, you know, Brian and all the followers do. They'll say, oh, it's the birth of Jesus Christ. You have no scriptural or historical proof of that. None. So what you're doing is just slapping Jesus Christ on a heathen holiday and claiming it's liberty. Well, again, by that same logic, we can observe Halloween too if we just slap Jesus Christ on it. If we find some way to just slap Jesus Christ on it, it's insanity. It's 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 I'd say it's borderline heresy almost to say that we can just take the heathen customs and just slap Jesus Christ on it, and and somehow it's liberty. And no, that's not what they're saying, but that is what it comes down to. So anyway, don't be deceived. Uh, I'd say mark and avoid Brian Dellinger. He has been rebuked and warned about this many times, and he will not take any correction. His his wicked followers are just in there calling people lost who don't agree with them. Mark and avoid them, and mark and avoid his followers, and mark and avoid born again barbarian like the plague because they are a cult. Okay, I do believe Brian is a safe man. So I do retract my comments. I was obviously very bitter and angry, which was was my fault. I I shouldn't have been that way. It was a fault on my part, but. Basically, just mark and avoid Brian Dillinger. Okay, mark and avoid his cult like the plague. They are toxic and they are wicked. And they are doing damage to young babes in Christ, getting them messed up in heathen customs. So anyway, don't be deceived by this cult. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.